Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a privilege to be in your presence. My name is Dr. Arnold Nirenberg. I've been a clinical psychologist licensed to practice in the state of California for over 47 years, and I've walked upon this earth for over 80 years. So I want to bring to you the, the fruit, the, the, uh, the harvest of, of a lifetime of clinical research, clinical practice, and life experience with the intention of uplifting you and your descendants for the rest of your lives. That's truly my intention. The title of today's presentation is Honor, Respect, Gratitude in the Family. Honor, Respect, and Gratitude in the Family. Why am I presenting this? <clears throat> I don't see much gratitude in the world. I really don't. I don't see that much respect either. That's why I want to give this. I, the, the children aren't learning it. The adults aren't showing it. There's a lack of civility on our roads with road rage. Uh, people have so much abundance, particularly in America. Most people are not grateful for what they have, for what we have, for the freedoms we have, for the, the food, the shelter, the, uh, the government, anything. So that's so it's a major issue. Now I want to say this to begin with in terms of the relation between honor, respect, and gratitude. Respect and gratitude are rays from the sun of honor. Respect and gratitude are rays from the sun of honor. So through honor, the sun is honor, and from that comes gratitude, from that comes respect. So to really bring respect into our homes, into the family, and into society. We need to understand honor and to practice the way of honor, which I'm going to talk to you about, a really perfect path to the way of honor. And certainly, if a person is ungrateful for all we have, there's no honor in that. Honor demands that we have gratitude for what we have and demands the expression of respect. Now, when I just talk about politeness, when somebody says, yes, sir, well, that may, that may be respectful, it may not be. If it's just a, an empty formality, calling somebody sir and ma'am, well, that's good. It's good to say it. But if it's an empty formality, it's not coming from a, a foundation of honor, then it's, it's better than nothing, but it's still superficial. Person says thank you, that's good, but if it's not from their heart and they're just saying it as a perfunctory matter, uh, that's not real gratitude. We are immersed in an ocean of abundance with the love and the beauty. It's just that we have this finger and this finger and this finger and this eye and this eye, and our kidneys are functioning, our kids are in good health. I mean, there's, a, there's an infinite number of things to be grateful for. And people just take it for granted. And that's not how we want to continue. We want to really be grateful. Grateful for the, all the kindnesses that people show us every day within the family and outside the family. Somebody lets you cut in front of them because they see you need to get in. And you, you say thank you. And you're really grateful this person is letting you in. But you know, not everybody says thank you. You let somebody in on the road, no sign of gratitude. Just come in, that's it. Well, that's a loss to them because let me tell you something. The experience of gratitude for small things and big things is a blessing. One of the greatest feelings you'll ever have is gratitude. It's a beautiful feeling. Beautiful. And a person who's not grateful cannot become truly happy. Or well, they may have some fun or entertainment for a little while, but can't be truly happy without that. Can't be truly happy without honor. Because these, these are rays of, from the Son of Honor. The, gra the gratitude and respect are rays from the Son of Honor. So, now let's talk about respect. I know something about every one of you. You want to be respected. You want your children to respect you. You want your colleagues to respect you. Your friends, your spouse, your boyfriend or girlfriend, your parents. You want respect. It's awesome to receive respect, but you know what? Everybody wants respect, but how many people really yearn to give respect? 
How many people say, you know what? I want to give respect. That's what you want to do. You want to want to give respect. Honor demands that. Some people aren't capable of giving you the respect back. We don't let people disrespect us, but at the same time, what I'm here to tell you is for you to desire, to yearn, and wish to be able to express respect and to feel respect. Not just to want it, but to give it. Now, just look what happens when it's not there. I want to make sure our children show us proper respect. There's two aspects of parenting. One, as a parent, we want to be able to express the unconditional love that we have for the children. We love them unconditionally. We give our kidney, we take a bullet for them. That's truly the blessing of a child, is it awakens the divine spark of love that's within us, that unconditional love, and it needs to be expressed. I'm talking about a normal mother and a normal father. They have that unconditional love. For the first time in life, they have an unconditional love for their children. That's there. And every parent knows it. Every normal parent knows that. Now, what people don't know is that it's natural. See, nobody told you to have unconditional love. No, you just have it. I'm saying to you, you need to find ways to express it through action, through word, through deed. But nobody had to tell you to have it. You naturally, if you're a normal human being, you have that for your children. And you have that for your grandchildren. It's just there. But guess what? It's natural and inborn in the children to have respect for us. It's unconditional respect. We have unconditional love for them. They have unconditional respect for us. They respect us. They do. Now, as they get older, they also have innately to test boundaries. So after a while, they're testing the boundaries, but they also they have the unconditional respect. You don't have to earn the respect of your children. They automatically respect you. But keep in mind, and we're talking about a normal child does. A normal child will automatically, unconditionally respect you, the parents. That's just there. Now, how does it get lost? Well, we want our children to be able to express themselves but it has to be in a respectful manner, in respect, what I call respectfully real manner. And if they start to disrespect you, that's a problem. That's a problem. Because if they disrespect you, the parent, they're going to disrespect themselves because you're internalized within them. They internalize their mother and father. If they disrespect their parents, they're going to disrespect themselves. And that's dangerous. That's extremely dangerous. And let me tell you what happens when they disrespect the parent and they disrespect themselves in that way. They won't respect the institutions of society. They won't res respect the laws of God. They won't respect the authority figures. Let me tell you what the problem is in our educational system. It's not funding. Mm -mm. People think, well, you throw enough money at it, you'll have a good education. Heck no. You could be in a classroom, the roof is leaking during the rains, and not have a single computer in there and get a top-notch education if the students respect the teacher. If the students respect the teacher, they will get a great education. And the problem with education the system is lack of respect for the teacher. Lack of respect. And when they don't respect, and that comes from what? They didn't respect their parents. If they disrespect the parent, they will disrespect the teacher. We could turn this nation around in one generation, bringing respect back into the home. Child disrespect, you say, that's not acceptable. You know, this would be the consequence uh, if you'd show me disrespect. When they show me respect, you show me respect, you know, I'm going to do more and more for you. I'll do anything for you. Now, what you need to know is this. If a child doesn't respect you, that's not your son or daughter. That's your offspring. Get this, you're a mother and you're a father. But for an offspring to be a son or an offspring to be a daughter, they must show you respect. And if they don't, they're just an offspring. Sperm and the egg fertilized, out came the child. That's an offspring. But to be a son, to be a daughter, they must show respect. I want you to keep that in mind. Without respecting you, they're not your sons, they're not your daughters. They're your offspring. 
Then you have to say, look, do you want to be an offspring or do you want to be my son? Do you want to be an offspring or do you want to be my daughter? Now, you have some, some children that are, that are just genetically abnormal. They're oppositional. They might be uh, uh, narcissistic, uh, narcissistic personality disorder, whatever. They may not be able to do that. But a normal child can. And it has to be consequences when they show respect and consequences when they don't show respect. That's the foundation of our society, is respect for the parents. That's why it's in the Ten Commandments. It's foundational. Honor thy parents. So that's the respect aspect. Now, for your children to understand respect, they have to see you, if you're a husband, to respect the mother, the, your wife. They have to see respect in the household to understand what respect is. Respect. You have to be able to give that. You don't have to like everything about your significant other. It has to be that respect, respect for a different opinion, uh, a respect for their reality, a respect for their needs. Gratitude. How many children say, hey, Dad, thanks for the lights. Thanks for paying the rent. Hey, Dad, thank you for the cell phone. No, I know practically no father here. Says, I know men that are work, sacrifice their lives, working day and night, every day. And there's no gratitude. Often the spouse has no gratitude. The children have no gratitude. And he's sacrificing his life day in and day out for his family. Or she's doing that for her family. So what, we're, what I'm here to bring is back respect and gratitude into the family, starting with us. I mean, I'm sure you're already doing to a very extent. We want to increase it. And the way we increase it, the surefire method to increase it, is to grow in the reality of honor. I'm defining honor as loyalty to our highest constructive values as enshrined in what I call the four commandments of honor. The four commandments of honor. What do I mean by commandments? We com the, you're already going to believe these principles. When I tell you what they are, you already believe them, you already know them. And you're commanding it to rise in the consciousness to be expressed in thought, word, and action. What are those four commandments of honor that you already believe in? <laughs> I'm not going to try to talk you into anything. I'm only here. What I, I'm trying to sell you something. You know what I'm trying to sell you? Yourself. Your own beliefs. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know or believe. Here are the four commandments of honor. I wish you well. That's an important dimension of gratitude and respect. I wish you well. I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. I respect you. I know you didn't totally do it. I co-created it. I have that respect for myself and for you to acknowledge that. Self-respect and respect for you. I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. Three, I'm grateful for the power I gained from Washington. There's always going to be setbacks and failures and whatever. Tribulations, crisis, but, I, but and you don't want them. But we're grateful for the power we gain from this. So the gratitude is important. And you know what? That's you respecting life. And you know what it brings? It brings respect to you. When people see you standing up to your trials and tribulations, like a man, like a woman, standing up and saying, I'm grateful for the power. I don't like it, but I'm grateful for the power I gain from this. That brings respect, by the way. Self-respect and respect from others. As opposed to just whining, complaining, and blaming. Blaming is disrespecting yourself and disrespecting others. You want to, some, I'm saying sometimes we need to say you co-created this, you're partly responsible, but you want to focus on yourself. I co-created this, I take responsibility. I'm not going to beat myself up about it, but I take full responsibility for co-creating this reality or this problem. And the fourth one depends whether you believe in God or not. If you believe in God as I do, God, your wish is my only wish. Or if you don't want to address God or don't believe, I seek always to serve my highest values. So there you have it. So the four commandments of honor for me would be, God, your wish is my only wish. I wish you well. I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. I'm grateful for the power I gain from hardship. 
you want to internalize that, for you to manifest the respect within you, for you to manifest the gratitude that's already within you, you must follow the way of honor. And internalizing these four commandments of honor is the path to do that. Oh, we want to re but if you just say it once, or you just hear me lecture now, useless. This lecture, this time you're spending with me, useless, a waste of your time. Unless you repeat these four commandments of honor three times a day for the rest of your life. The rest of your life. If you want to take a pledge, you want to commit, fully commit, no holding back. And the commitment goes in this pledge to become what I call a disciple of honor. It goes this way. As a disciple of honor, I pledge myself for all the days of my life to the four commandments of honor. And I will teach them to those I love. I'll repeat them every morning, afternoon, and evening, and I'll listen to myself recite them. You know, when people take that pledge, they say, welcome to the way of honor. This brings honor to you and to your family. By the way, I've administered it to over 1,100 people. Over 95% feel good right away. Over 95% of people feel more hope immediately. And over 92% feel more meaning in their lives immediately. So now you have a commitment to the way of honor. Now you have a commitment to the expression of respect and gratitude, which are two rays from the sun of honor. Now you want to increase the probability that we're going to apply this in any situation that comes up. Things always come up. It's surprising things come up. It comes out of left field. You go in this way, something hits you that way. To be able to always deal with it. We're not being caught off guard. So we're repeating this at least, three, at least three times a day. Then we have what I call the bridge. It's a bridge from the reality of honor to reality out, of outside ourselves. The bridge goes this way. What's the most honorable thing to think, say, and do? What's the most honorable thing to think, say, and do? So you say the four commandments of honor and the bridge. So it goes... God, your wish is my only wish. I wish you well. I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. I'm grateful for the power I gain from hardship. What's the most honorable thing to think, say, and do? Any situation we're in then, we're going, what, what's the most honorable thing to think, say, and do? Honor becomes the gold standard for every thought, word, and action. And keep in mind, honor is the path to gratitude and respect, to emanating that, to giving that, to manifesting that. Now, that'll do it. The Four Commandments of Honor, the Pledge, and the Bridge. For those who want to go into a more advanced stage of honor, they can become what I call devotees of honor, where they want to bring the honor not just to their loved ones and to themselves, but to the world. And people who become devotees of honor take a pledge to repeat the supremacy of honor code, the supremacy of honor code at least once a day. The supremacy of honor code is this. Honor before pride, honor before anger, honor before sex, honor before money. Honor before fear, honor before everything. Honor before life itself. That, that's extremely powerful. You're setting honor as your main priority in life. And that will maximize the experience of gratitude, and the experience of showing and receiving respect. That's the key. If you want to go to the advanced level, it just, it just amplifies the whole system. Then for those who want to be uh, devotees of honor and repeat the supremacy of honor code once a day, in addition to the four commandments of honor, in addition to the bridge. Supremacy, so the pledge goes this way. As a devotee of honor, I pledge myself for all the days of my life to the supremacy of honor code. And I'll bring it to the world for a more just society. Welcome to the devotees. Honor to the people. That's the theme of the whole honor movement. Honor, honor to the people. As you live this life, you'll give and, re and receive more respect and gratitude and those to whom you are a role model, such as your children, your nieces and nephews and so forth, they will become more grateful. They will see, you will see more gratitude being expressed and you'll be seeing more respect occurring from them. This is the path to respect and gratitude 
is through manifesting honor in your life by being disciples of honor, by being devotees of honor. It's a very simple system. It's a very natural system. It's organic. We don't have to go somewhere to recite it. You can be brushing your teeth, watching TV, changing a diaper and a baby and recite it. It takes four commands of honor to take four seconds. Or eight seconds. The four commandments of honor take eight seconds, and it's four seconds for the bridge. That's 12 seconds. That's 36 seconds a day. I want to tell you right now, there's nothing you could do in 36 seconds that will bring you the benefit that this 36 seconds will bring you. I want to say it again. There's nothing you can do, nothing in the world that you can do in 36 seconds to bring this kind of power and peace and a life without regret, 36 seconds a day. Why wouldn't anybody want to do it? And keep in mind, repetition is preparation for application. Some people love saying the commandments of honor and the bridge and the supremacy of honor code. Me, no, it's kind of neutral. But it's not long enough to be boring. But the application is awesome. The repetition is preparation for application. And when you apply it, it's awesome. It's life-changing. Heck, it'll even change your dreams. So there you have it. Honor, respect, and gratitude in the family. Could have been honor, respect, and gratitude in the family and in the world. Because the family is a microcosm of society. So with that, I want to open it up and see uh, any comments. Any comments or questions you might have? Well, some people might be able to show you respect just because they're respectful people. But if you don't live a life of honor, you're not going to be able to have respect for others. And that's key. That's what this is about. What I'm teaching you is not how to get respect. I'm teaching you how to give respect. And some people will return that and some won't. But the intention is not to get the respect or get the gratitude. We're not trying to manipulate people who respect us and have gratitude to us. No. We're doing this so we'll show respect or we'll show gratitude. Normal human being will return it, but that's on them. Doesn't mean we never let somebody disrespect us. We say, hey, I'm talking to you respectfully. I appreciate if you talk to me respectfully. We're not doormats. But on the other hand, I'm not teaching you how to gain respect. I'm not teaching you how to gain gratitude to people who say thank you. No. I'm teaching you, I'm teaching myself for us to have more respect, for us to have more gratitude, because that's a beautiful way to live. You're going to give it. You give it. But let me tell you something right now. You can't expect people to respect you, understand you. We embrace the world as disciples of honor. We don't even expect them to understand us. People are all fragile. They're just fighting to survive. Some will. and They'll become your friends and your family, whatever. But some won't. It's not in them. So again, we're not giving it to get it. I'm not going to give it to you so I can get it from you. No. I'm going to give it because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an honorable person. I'm a disciple of honor. I'm going to give it. And that's, that's the honor. Exactly. That's the honor. honor demands that we do this. It's not so we can get it. Honor is an end in itself. Honor comes before everything, before life itself. So we manifest it. We manifest it. And that helps it grow in others. Good points. Other questions? Michael, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Anything you want to add or say? Respect is, uh, you, you, you gain integrity when you get respect. That's, that's what it's all about, our own integrity. So you really, okay. you really gain integrity. That's what it's about. We get, we, we, that's our integrity is, through matter, keep in mind, respect and integrity too. Gratitude are all rays from the sun of honor. They all come from that big, that sun, and he's a rays of that. It's the honorable thing to do is, is to give respect, and, and, and in turn, it's not it's not wrong to expect it back. I wouldn't expect. I, I want to recommend you something. Have to give it. You have to give it because it makes you an honorable person. Yeah, I I would not. It's going to be a problem if you expect it because a lot of people can't give it. We give it. Yeah. We give it. You certainly don't, you certainly don't, that's certainly not the reason you give it. No. You hope for it. 
without somebody, you know, we, we hope that they'll give it, that they'll do it because it's good for them. To truly live a life of honor, we don't need their gratitude. We don't need their respect. We give it. It's good for them to do it. And it's, on the other hand, conversely, it's bad for them not to have it. It's, it hurts them, damages them. We want them to have it for their well-being. We don't need it. We have it. We give it. Some people will receive it well and some not. Some people look at gratitude and respect as weakness. They think, ah, oh, he's less than me. He's weak. That, that's not our problem. That's their problem. Well, it's been my pleasure. Example, integrity, What's that? Of course you feel, but that's, 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 that's. We feel good giving respect. We feel good being grateful because this, we were living an honorable life. That's the best life possible. It's a life without regret. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful path. It's been my pleasure to be able to meet with you, to present to you honor, respect, and gratitude in the family. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful to have had this time with you, truly.